get started with the new deferral classification guide and tracking feature in Hancock software. Um, I'm Danielle and alongside me I have Matt uh, who has configured a site for us to walk through and get your feedback on how the new weatherization deferral classification guide would work in a software system. So um, what I'm showing here is the beginning slide just to introduce you to the deferral classification guide. So kind of recently DOE published a guidance where the purpose is they want to use consistent deferral language for weatherization projects. And then they would like to ask you to report on those deferrals. Um, why is this so important right now? Um, and I'm sure you all know, with the weatherization readiness funding, you have the opportunity to go beyond weatherization and actually resolve these deferrals. So we're gonna show you during the webinar how to use the standardized list, then how you would uh, remedy that action through weatherization readiness funding, and then how you can revisit it in the future uh, by using the DOE bill funding. So it's a workflow that uh, you can report on DOE on how you use weatherization readiness funding to resolve deferral actions. Now, I'm not going to go through each of these uh, items on my screen, uh, but I would say there's almost 20 of them. Maybe there's 18 of them. Um, and these are DOE's standardized list. So they want to move to a standardized list of deferral reasons. This goes from like your house being for sale to repair needed to uh, health and safety, to, you know, uncooperative behavior. So DOE um, gathered, you know, the different reasons for possibly deferring a household and came up with a standardized list. And at Hancock, we're gonna show you how we've implemented this list and it can be used for project tracking and reporting. Uh, what does it mean to be deferred? And, you know, I asked a couple of Hancock's existing customers this question, um, what, how, what does it mean to be deferred? And really the answer um, depends on which, it really depends on which funding you're using. So, uh, for example, I asked uh, the state of Kentucky this question, like, what does it mean for you all to be deferred? And theirs follows the DOE process. So the state of Kentucky, they use weatherization readiness funding. So their plan is if they can defer, resolve the deferral, they will use weatherization readiness funding, but they will not do anything else in that house until the deferral is resolved. So that's a very standard workflow of a state that uses DOE funding. I asked the same question to the state of Vermont and they are allowed to leverage their funding. So their answer might be a little bit different. Uh, what we're gonna show you today though is the flexibility of whatever your state process is. Uh, you can have that flow in Hancock's cloud system, which is called Hancock Cloud, and in the mobile app, Mint, and it'll be like customized, I guess I wanna say, or tailored to your state specific process. So right now, um, if there are not any questions, I'm gonna pass this over to Matt. If I can find the controller, the go-to controller here. So Matt, can you take the, there it is. Thank you, Matt. Great. Okay, so on that screen right now, we have an example site. Um, in this example site, all the data is anonymized, but we've set up the framework for it to mirror a state that is running uh, DOE funds. So you're gonna see uh, at the top, we created a new allocation, is it what Hancock calls it? And this is a new, um, tracking funding source for DOE deferrals. Um, it doesn't have a budget, uh, you know, it's just pretty much a placeholder where you can, dis you can designate deferral actions to it. 
But right below that, you can see Matt has DOE bill funding. So DOE bill funding has a pot of money in it. It's allocated to the different agencies. And if he goes down almost to the end, he can see the readiness funding. So this is an example weatherization state that is running um, DHS LIHEAP for weatherization. They're running DOE regular weatherization. They're running readiness funding and they're preparing for their bill money. Uh, so the change we've added in this configuration setup is a new allocation called DOE deferrals. So that's just a little bit of background about what you're seeing in this deferral setup. Now we're gonna go and we're gonna step into the process. You are a weatherization agency. Um, you are have received a weatherization application and perhaps on the front end before ever even stepping into the house, you find out that this house needs to be deferred for X, Y, Z reasons. So what Matt is doing is he has a project um, it is ready for readiness funding, bill funding, and then the new added allocation deferrals. So what that means in Hancock is any measure that supports those three fundings is now avail available for Matt to choose. So this Ada Lovelace project, when he goes down to the spot in Hancock measure management where you um, look for measures, if there is a reason where you absolutely know that this measure is not going, you know, that this house is not going to be weatherized, then you would be able on the front end before ever visiting the house to go um, and def defer it. So Matt, do you have any sense of like one of those deferral reasons that you might find out? Is there mold in there? Would, I can take a look at the standardized list with you. Yeah. Absolutely. So a lot of the measures that can be treatable with funding are things that we might typically see, you know, some repair needed in the ceiling or electrical repairs. And these things could be from uh, sewage that's causing damage or mold and moisture, uh, as you said before. So there's reason or there's options that are available for us to fix these specific issues and we can treat these issues with funding. And so that's how we've broken it apart by issues that are treatable with funding. And then we also do have issues that are not treatable with funding. And so those cases may be uh, the applicant or your client is on cooperative. There may be concerns of illegal activity occurring in the household, or maybe the building itself is for sale or foreclosure. And so those are things that we cannot necessarily fix with funding. And so that's how we've broken apart these two uh, classes here. Great, so let's like pause here for the non-funding. Let's say I do client intake at a weatherization agency and this person is not interested in strangers entering their house, right? They want to refuse service. What you could do, the first thing Matt did was he went to that group called class identify group and he selected non-funding. So there is going to be no path forward in this case. And then he can select um, threatening or uncooperative behavior or, you know, that might be the standardized list. So look at when Matt selected non-funding, only the measures that are supported by non-funding show up for him. And this is going to lead to more accurate DOE reporting. So when DOE asks for the report for deferrals, um, there's no chance that, you know, a measure that is eligible for funding would be reported in the non-funding option. Um, and I'm going to pause right here because uh, Monica, one of the attendees, has a question, and I do think it's relevant at this time. What about when you leverage DOE with LIHEAP? How would you bill that? So, really, like, if you're, maybe it wouldn't be for the reason threatening or not cooperative, right? It would be for a different reason. So, let's say like with funding, yeah, let's say we do roof repair, Matt, I think you mentioned that was one of them. Let's say we do roof repair. Um, and really this is something we'd probably see on site, but for now, let's just say we do roof repair. And Matt, it's up to you if you put a cost in or not. 
maybe we don't know the cost now. Maybe, you know, we learn on the phone, whatever, that their roof is falling down. Um, a lot of times the question Monica is asking is, even though that house can't be weatherized right now, you might be able to use LIHEAP funding to do um, base load measures. So you might be able to go in and add lighting. You might be able to select faucet aerators or shower heads, hot water measures. Uh, so all you'd have to do is you would add that measure and Matt, you can do it through this interface in Hancock Cloud. And then a little bit later, we'll show you how to do it on our mobile app. So you'd press new at the top right. And then in the measure name, you would search for, um, yeah, you can go right to measure if you're not, yeah. Yeah, you can you can type in there, um, you know, the lights, light. And you would, you would be able to see um, the second one, like, you know, recessed lighting or box lighting, whatever it is, um, and save. And you can add the uh, LIHEAP measures on top of the DOE deferral. So as long as you don't add, assign this funding to DOE, you're set. So now Matt's gonna go to, a, he's gonna go to measure management and he's gonna change that pick list here. Measure management is where you like organize the measures and add them in Hancock Cloud to assign allocation where you assign the funding. And this is where we make it very easy for you to leverage funding. So here you can leverage funding. For the demo purpose, Matt prepared um, weatherization readiness and bill. But in your case, Monica, see the top where Matt has DOE bill, deferrals and readiness. He would have a fourth one LIHEAP um, and then you would be able to assign the other measures to LIHEAP and still continue to report on the DOE deferral. So I hope that answers your question. Uh, again, put your questions in. I think we have a hand raised. So I will, let's check on who's got their hand raised. I don't see it. Oh, I don't see it. Okay. Ange Angela, you have your hand raised. I'm going to try to unmute you. Okay. Angela, do you have a microphone? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Um, yeah. I just had a quick question on, um, we're not, we don't have the upgraded version of Hancock that we're supposed to get later this year. Um, no. It looks like, is that what you're using at the moment or you're just using the mobile format? Um, at the moment, we're using the upgraded backend. It's okay. confusing names. It's almost called the same thing, Hancock Cloud. Right. Um, yep. And I can help you through the other site, but um, mainly we're showing this because it's so configurable. Um, what state are you from, Angela? Maryland. Maryland. Oh, good. So uh, when Maryland moves to this new site, this deferral tracking will be part of it. Okay. In the existing site, you might have the concept of selecting a deferral reason, and maybe you'll see those standardized now, and then the ability to resolve a deferral. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, and Sue asks a great question, how do you enter multiple deferral reasons? And this just might be the point where we enter multiple deferral reasons, but maybe we jump to deferral reasons you find in the field. And for that, Matt, would you like to show your mobile app? Okay. So picture Matt in real life right now. This is his um, laptop. So Matt decides to run Hancock's mobile app on his laptop. This is different than a lot of you guys that are attending this webinar use Hancock now. You must use an iPad. In the new software, you can use a mobile app on um, a laptop device, a Windows laptop device, an iOS device. So it's a little bit uh, more flexible in how you decide to use the mobile app. So Matt, you know, I have an iPad in my hand, but Matt has his laptop. So he has his laptop in the field and that's how he's choosing to do this. And this gives us a little um, preview of Hancock's new um, energy modeling version. So in our new energy model, uh, we heard a lot of feedback about heat. This one is called MINT. MINT stands for Mobile M Int Intake. 
mobile intake. And in mobile intake, we have the step-by-step -step guided audit for your assessors. So in Mint, you used to have this dashboard and you used to click through icons, I mean, in Heat. But in the new one, we just have this simple step-by-step -step guided audit where similar, you know, you get the building information, you review utility information, um, and then we put this to do, we call it, for deferrals. So immediately when you go into that project, if there is something where you can't continue, um, you would check deferred. Now, here's like the feedback or um, something I wanna put in, tell you all about. If you guys have a deferral reason and it stops the project, we can configure your site so you don't see the rest of the audit. So if Matt here were to select like cleanup or remediation beyond the scope of weatherization, DOE asks him to choose the category for weatherization readiness funding. So they have a subset categories that apply to some of the actions. The action is the measure. So for cleanup or remediation, um, you can choose the clutter, the lead paint, mold. Matt, mold's a common one. Um, and when you report to DOE, you'll also report the weatherization readiness category. We also leave a spot there for notes. So you can enter the explanation if you need to enter further explanation. And you can enter notes up there. What's really cool about this new version is you can save a note. So if, yeah, and this I think goes on the report, right, Matt, the explanation. But if you just wanted cool. like a note for your agency at the top there, you can save a note Matt can write a note, you know, um, you can say clutter, whatever. And then he can select save, save last note. So it's a real easy way to um, select more than one measure or maybe more than one project, use this note and fetch it late for later on. So Sue's question is, you know, how do we select multiple reasons? Well, he's just selected the first reason. And to select the second reason, he would just go back and use his search or see the list of standardized reasons and select the second one. Um, so now he's selecting electrical repair needed. And, you know, these weatherization readiness categories are different. So now that he's selected a different um, action, the categories changed based on the on the action he selected. So he's adding um, notes and selecting done. So in this example, Matt is in the field. He found two reasons, you know, that are um, treatable with funding, and he entered these reasons. Now, if he goes back, here's the flexibility. If he goes back one level, if you are continuing the project with funding, then you keep going down the checklist, right? You go to health and safety, you go to ventilation, heating and cooling. Maybe if you are continuing the project, you cannot make this house airtight for sure, but maybe you could go down um, to other measures or lighting or um, hot water. So this to-do list can be programmed to uh, be dynamic based on your state's requirements. So Sue, I know you're from Pennsylvania. You guys might wanna think um, you do primarily LIHEAP and DOE. You might wanna think, of course I can't air seal this house if there's a deferral reason, but maybe I can do base load. So I'm gonna keep refrigerators, lighting, and appliances on my to-do list. Um, and we can configure your Mint app to do that. So that's why this new version um, that a lot of your states that are attending today are moving towards this year has a lot of flexibility behind it. All right, do I have um, questions? I've been talking a lot. We're still good on questions? Great. 
Okay, so did you notice, you know, when Matt recorded the deferral, something happened on his checklist. It checked off and it says, okay, you're all set. So after in our new, um, in our new energy model to-do list, after you finish one of the items, it checks off at, as completed, which is really nice in a guided audit. So we've really tried to make this a simple guided audit um, for any kind of full energy model, quick audit. Um, in this webinar, the case is deferral. So as soon as he filled out that deferrals, um, it's all set. Now, if he removes those deferrals, you know, he is allowed, and it's up to you if you do it or not yet, Matt, whatever you'd like. But if he removes the deferrals, um, if there's no deferral there, the software will let you go on and continue the to-do list. So you would only record the deferrals if there is some sort of action funding or non-funding needed. So see how that changed for him? When there's no deferral, um, it changed as no deferral needed. And then if he finds a circumstance where it is, that's when he would go in and then select the deferral reason. Great, okay. And then after he selects that reason, um, he would sync. I don't think he's really gonna sync right now, but he can show you where there's the sync option. And that's what pushes the data back to Hancock Cloud. Um, so we are back on Hancock Cloud, and he has a project that he's entered a few reasons for. And Matt, your project is um, with uh, fund, right? With funding, treatable with funding. Yep. Okay, so you want to probably make sure there's a cost in there for the roof repair, um, and you can enter the yep or the perfect that goes to the material cost. And then just to circle back what Matt showed earlier, he would go to assign allocation and that's where he would decide how to assign leverage the different measures. Um, and then he reports on them. So he reports, he invoices the deferrals per se, right? If he's doing treatable with funding and he invoices the deferral with the weatherization readiness funding. So uh, Matt there, you can assign that treatable with funding to weatherization readiness, and he's gonna click apply, and then he would be able to continue invoicing. Now he has invoiced a deferral um, before the demo, right, Matt? And you have something that will show on the reports? Yes, that's correct. All right, so let's jump to the report. So it's time, um, DOE has asked you to report on your deferral classifications as it relates to weatherization readiness. So what he's doing is he's running a statewide report here. He can run it on the client's apply date because you know a lot of these deferrals are not going to be invoiced, right? So most commonly you will run it on applied date. Um, and then he enters the date range. And what we're going to produce is that DOE classification tracker that DOE sent to state program manager. So it's a classification tracker where it, you know, we've only done one household here, which is why there's one home, but it lists the non-funding related issues and the total number of times that measure was selected um, in the non-funding related category. And then it goes with uh, treated, treatable issues with funding and does the same count. So in Matt's example, he did a combination of um, non-funding, which is the health and safety may be negatively affected versus the electrical floor and roof repair, which is treatable with funding. So you can see the total home count below. And then uh, it counts the total deferral issues and then the average number of deferrals per home. So the average. Um, so it is a very useful tool in completing uh, DOE's weatherization deferral tracking. Okay, um, so we are at the two o'clock. 
Matt, can you see the questions? My like my go-to screen is frozen. There are questions below Sue. Can you ask them to me? I can't see them. The last one I see is how would you enter multiple deferral reasons? You don't see anything. It looks like there's something Sue. below that. I can't scroll down. I can't scroll either. Is okay. this deferral tracking only available in Hancock Cloud? Um, right now, yes. This level of deferral tracking that we showed is available in Hancock Cloud. Some of you are using our previous um, generation software still, and what we do for that, we can put the standardized list in at least, and then we can track um, resolutions and we can add deferrals as measures. So you have a measure list where you can add these deferrals as measures. And we can work with you through the support desk to um, guide you on how to add those deferrals as measures. Great um, question. All right, are there any other questions, Matt? Okay, well, everybody, thank you so much for attending today. I recorded this. Uh, please don't hesitate these last couple of minutes to send me your BPI number. Um, I export the attendee list and the registration list, and I'll send everybody on that. Matt and I is recording today. Uh, so look forward to this. This is coming in a future release. Um, we just wanted to get some feedback and preview it with you all. Uh, we will run another webinar in the next couple of weeks. Keep an eye out on Justice 40 requirements. So we have so much coming down the pipeline. I know you guys are so busy and you need um, tracking and reporting uh, to be easy. So thank you very much we for your do. attendance today, and we'll see you at the next webinar. Bye. <laughs>